what freedoms are guaranteed by the Indian Constitution. Are such freedoms exhaustive? Discuss if such freedoms are absolute rights and if not, discuss the need for limiting them. Ans. Right to freedom the Article 19 to 22 deals with different aspects of this basic right. Article 19 guarantees to the citizen of India the six fundamental freedoms which are exercisable by them throughout and in all part of the territory of India. These are a. Freedom of speech and expression b. Freedom of assembly c. Freedom of association d. Freedom of movement e. Freedom of residence and settlement f. Omitted by 44th Amendment g. Freedom of profession occupation, trade or business. These freedoms are, however, not absolute. The clauses 2 to 6 of Article 19 recognize the right of the state to make laws putting reasonable restrictions for the reasons set out in those subclauses. The restrictions which may be imposed under any of the clauses must be reasonable restrictions. Hence, a law restricting the exercise of any of the six freedoms guaranteed by Clause 1 of Article 19 to be constitutionally valid must satisfy two conditions. I. The restriction must be for the particular purpose mentioned in the clause permitting the imposition of the restriction on that particular right and 2. The restriction must be a reasonable restriction. Reasonable restrictions the Supreme Court has laid down the guidelines for determining the reasonableness of restrictions which are as follows it is the courts and not the legislature which has to judge finally whether a restriction is reasonable or not. The term reasonable restriction in Article 19, 6 connotes that the limitation imposed on a person in the enjoyment of his right should not be arbitrary or of an excessive nature beyond what is actually required in the interest of the public. The expression seeks to strike a balance between the individual rights guaranteed by Article 19 and social control permitted by clauses 2 to 6 of Article 19. Therefore, the restriction must have a reasonable relation with the object which the legislation seeks to achieve and must never exceed it. There is no definite or absolute test to judge the reasonableness of a restriction. Each case is to be judged on its own merits. The following factors have to be taken into consideration for any judicial verdict. a. The nature of the right infringed b. The underlying purpose of the restrictions imposed c. The extent and urgency of the civil wrongs to be remedied d. The disproportion of the imposition e. The prevailing conditions at that time. The restriction must be reasonable from the substantive as well as procedural standpoint. A restriction which is imposed for securing the objects laid down in the directive principles of state policy may be regarded as reasonable restriction. Hanif Qureshi v. State of Bihar, AIR 1958 SC 731 The court must determine the reasonableness of a restriction by objective standard and not by subjective one. In other words, the question is not of the court feels the restriction to be reasonable, but where a normal reasonable man would regard the restriction to be reasonable. It is the reasonableness of the restriction which is to be determined by the court and not the reasonableness of the law. Restriction may also amount to prohibition under certain circumstances. The rights guaranteed by Article 19 are available only to citizens and not to an alien or a foreigner. Citizens under Article 19 mean only natural persons and not legal persons such as corporations or companies. The only of proving to the satisfaction of the court that the restriction is reasonable is upon the state. The harder the restriction the heavier the owns to prove the reasonableness.